Okay, so uh, thank you, Casper, for the for the nice introduction. Um, as Casper said, uh, I will now uh, go into the technical details of our talk. Um, I am a software engineer. My name is Mariano Martinez Peck. I am from Argentina, and I work remotely for instantiations. Um, what we are going to do today is a hands-on demo, and that basically means that I want you to stop me, ask, raise your hand, and the idea is that you can all follow the demos, that you can make it work, and that you can go home, and you have something to play. So ask as many questions as you want, interrupt me, there's no, no problem. And the second thing I wanted to, to be sure is that it, just let me know if some part of the screen doesn't uh, read on the, uh, on the back of, of the room. So if there is some font or something, let me know, and I, I will make it bigger. But it's important that you can correctly see the screen. OK? So with that being said, uh, we will uh, start. So in this, uh, the, the agenda for, for this uh, part of the presentation is basically, uh, first, we, we have to do some preparation, some previous steps. Uh, I know that some of, you, some of you probably already did these steps, but if someone is having trouble, we can troubleshoot these problems before we actually start with the demo. So once we did this uh, preparation, the next step is to provision the hardware, to set up the hardware so that we can run Toit on it. So that will be the next step. And once we have actually uh, provisioned the hardware and we have toy ready, then we will run a hello world, uh, the typical basic example. After that, we will try the, another little program, which is a, a date and time logger, which is still something more or less simple, but slightly more advanced than the hello world. Then we will see a traffic light application, uh, which you may have guessed by now uh, that you have in your box uh, a traffic light. Then we will do a fleet device update, which uh, we will basically be updating all of the devices automatically. And then finally, we will try to do some commands so that you can go home and continue playing with, with the ESP. So if, in case you, you didn't know, you can take it home, so you can continue playing at home. So we will do some setup so that you can do that, OK? So um, for this uh, hands-on, we put in the Riot uh, registration website a link for some steps that needed to be uh, run, so these steps if we go to this URL, you should see them. But basically, uh, there are these uh, steps that you can see in this uh, page, which basically means uh, you need to first sign up for the Toy platform so that you can do uh, cloud development and you, you will be able to use Toy Console and everything. Then the second step is that you need to send us the account that you use to register because, and you will see later, uh, we will create a demo uh, where we need to put all of us in the same project. And that's why we needed the account that, that you use. Then you will need to install the Toy command line client because we will have some examples that will be run from the command line. Some others will be run from the web, but we will have both. And number, step number four is to install some USB drivers that, uh, depending on the operation system, they may, they may be necessary or not. Usually, Windows need it, and uh, Mac sometimes, and Linux normally don't. So it depends a lot on which version of the operation system you are, et cetera. Uh, and then the the last step is just basically to you know, be sure that you have Chrome or Edge, because those are the supported 
browser when we are going to prepare the hardware to run Toit. Um, and finally, if you want, you can download the PDF of the of this presentation so that you can, for example, if I go to the terminal and you, you couldn't see, you wanted to see something in the slide and I, I move away, then you can follow uh, with the PDF of this presentation and also because it may help you to copy paste some commands. So it will be handy for you to have the, the, the PDF available. So with that said, I would give you uh, a couple of minutes for all of you to get this step ready. I will be around, I can help. And once we are all ready, we will continue with the, with the, with the presentation. Okay? So, okay, so let's, let's get started with the, with the actual demos. So the first step is to actually set up the hardware and set up toy to be able to run in that hardware. So um, you probably, you should have received a, a, a demo kit, which uh, the kit includes uh, the ESP32 development board, which looks like this. So this is the ESP32 development kit. And it's called development kit because it has a nice pinout and pins for you to experiment and uh, with the GPOs. But the ESP32 is actually much smaller. It's almost this part of the chip. Um, so you can buy it, the, you can buy the development kit or you can just buy the microcontroller. Um, then you should have received a cable that we are gonna use to plug into the computer and to give power to the ESP32. And then a GPU uh, traffic light uh, that we will use also in the demos, okay? So what we need to do now is to provision the hardware, and we are gonna do that through the Toit web console. So here are two new things. The, what, is, what it is to provision the hardware, and the other one is what is the web, Toit web console, okay? So we will start explaining first what is to provision the hardware. And provisioning the hardware in a, in a sentence means to prepare the ESP32 so that you can run toy programs on it. As simple as that. Now, in, in behind the scenes, in the details, when you actually make the provision, there are more things happening on the device. For example, it needs to erase the flash of the device it needs to create some partitions. It needs to install toy firmware into the device. Then it needs to assign some kind of hardware ID. So there are a couple of steps involved in, in the process. But in general, it just means to prepare the hardware so that you can run toy programs on it. OK? And the web console, as you can see, the first step is basically to sign in into the web toy console, which is console.toit.io. So I will go there and I will show you more or less what it is. So you get to this screen uh, uh, of, of the Toit console. You need to sign in with whatever you use to register. Um, this is uh, what is called the, the console. So there are, uh, the console is basically uh, a platform to view, manage, add, remove, and, and, and handle all your fleets of devices that you have uh, access to with your account. So it allows you to, for example, view the devices that, that, that you have. Uh, you can view a given device where you can see a lot of information, nice charts about the usage. You can see the logs of that, uh, of that um, device. You can see the deploy application. You can run code on the device. And there are a lot of things that you can do from the, the web console. And 
the thing that we are going to do uh, now from the Toit web console is to provision the hardware. And something important to note is that most of the things that could be done through the web console can also be done from the command line. So you will see that there is a, a, a really one-to-one -one relationship between the command line and the web console. Both are able to do uh, most of the things. In this case, we are going to use the console because it, the user experience is usually nicer. So the next step here would be to select the Riot Dev Day project um, from the web console. So if you go to the web console, you will see that in the top right, uh, there are the list of projects where you are registered. The, what, but what is a project? In, in Toit's world, a project is like a group of registered users and devices that work together for a given purpose. Th that's a project. It's basically a group of user accounts and devices where all of the users has access to all of those devices, a fleet of devices for a given project. So what I did is I, I uh, created um, I created um, a project called Riot Dev Day, which you can see there. You can see real, real, there the Riot Dev Day. Um, and that's why I needed your emails, because I added you to this project so that we are all within the same project. And you will see later on, on, on the presentation, there is a demo that relies on the fact that we are all on the same project. Okay. So it's important now for you to select Riot Dev Day because the next step, when you provision the hardware, it's associated to the project. So be sure now to select Riot Dev Day before you provision, okay? Because otherwise it will be it will be using the default my project, which is not uh, what we want. So you select Riot Dev Day. Um, the next step is to plug the ESP32 to your computer with the USB cable. So I will, I will follow exactly the same steps. I will plug it. Okay. Once you plug it, you should see a red LED. That means that the device receive power and has uh, a boot. So we are ready to make the uh, provision of, of the hardware. So to actually do the provision, we have to go to the serial tab and click the button ready. So we need to go to serial and click the button ready. And in this case, you should see a pop-up coming up where uh, it should say, you should first, you should have at least one option in the pop-up. If, if you don't have an option, then you're having a, pr a problem likely with the drivers. So if anyone in the room does not see anything in the pop-up, then, then you need help. And the second thing is that you should be able to see uh, one item that says CP210. You should see that. If you don't see it, raise your hand, because again, it's not reconnecting. You can travel there? Ah, OK. I think that, let me see. I think it should be fine. Yeah, OK. okay. Should, should, be, should be fine. OK. So I will select, we will select that one. And basically what we are doing here is select which uh, serial port we are using to uh, provision, which is the serial port that uh, it's connected to the ESP32. Now, if you click that, you should 
probably have all these buttons like provision, restart, monitor, you should have them in black and ready to click. In my case, you see like it looks like it's hung there and the buttons are in gray. This is because there is a certain combination of operation system, browser, the hardware that requires some extra step, which is to push a small button you can see here at the very bottom. I mean, if you face it to you, there are two small buttons on the, on the, on the bottom. And if you happen to have the same scenario as me, you need to click for a little bit the button which is on the right, opposite to the lead, and then you will see I get. So it's, it, there's some hardware, some combination that requires for you to push the boot button for a second. Uh, I guess you know, that didn't happen to anyone, right, in the room? Okay, perfect, only me. <laughs> okay, so once we did that, we will go to uh, provision step, and here it asks us the password and the SSID. And why it asks this? Because one of the main things about Toit is that the device will be connected to a Toit's cloud automatically when boot. So the device boots and connects to the Toit cloud uh, during boot. And that could be cellular, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi. In this case, we are going to use Wi-Fi. So that's why when we are installing Toit on the hardware, we are going to also tell it to which Wi-Fi it will connect at boot, OK? So here we will use WakeTech as the SSID, and we will leave the password empty. So let's do that, WakeTech. Remember to have Riot Dev Day selected. If you, if you didn't do it, just don't forget to select Riot Dev Day. And then we click Provision. In my case, I need to push the bottom again here. OK. And then you will see this uh, progress bar uh, going. And when it's finished, it will show you a device name, OK? When it shows you the device name, write it down. Don't forget it, because uh, otherwise it will, get, it will get messy in the demo that uh, I want to show. So because there is no way to map the device name to the computer that was used to provision it. So, so that everybody knows who is the device, uh, you need to keep the name, which the name is basically two random words together. So you can see, for example, in mine, it was calm plane. OK, thankfully, it's calm. Um, so that's the name of my, of my device, OK? You should have your own. So is it assigned by, how is it assigned? How it's assigned? Somehow randomly. The, yeah, when, when, the, when the download happens. The, the name you mean? Yeah, this name. Yes, the name is randomly generated when, you, when it makes the provision. Yeah, so it's just, and then you are able to rename it. So I can show you later if you want. I can show you how to re rename it if you want to. So to confirm that the setup is actually working, you can go to the uh, devices tab, and you should see uh, all of our devices there. Uh, check for yours, and yours should be, and the rest as well, should be with status healthy. Status healthy means that the device was uh, connected. Uh, it was boot and connected to the Toys Cloud. And that's why you can see it alive from, from here. So let me see. It's probably all of you except me because I have disconnected mine. So yeah, you can see mine is unhealthy because I unplug it to, to erase yours. So you see, I don't have it. Uh, but that allows me to show the next step, which is good. Um, kind of what uh, Seth 
said a couple of minutes ago, the provision is just once. Once you have provisioned the hardware, then you don't need to do that anymore, OK? In fact, you can add more Wi-Fi's from the web console. So it's not even that you, you change. For example, if you go home, we can add more networks. So you, you, it's very unlikely that you need to provision it again. And when it, once it is provisioned, it's very energy efficient and can run, can run on almost any power source. It consumes very little, and it can be powered with anything else. Um, the interesting here is that uh, the device does not need to be connected to your computer any longer. The only moment where you need to plug the ESP32 is to provision. After that, everything happens over the air, wirelessly through the, through the, through the platform. You don't need to, and I will do, I will do the, the demo, for example, I will, I will plug it, uh, for example, in my battery pack, so not to my computer. And so I will take my battery pack, I will take the cable, and I will plug it. So you see, now it's not in my computer, it's, it's here. And if we go to the console, you can see it became healthy. It's online. And everything happens now through Wi-Fi or cellular or Ethernet. As, as you can see in the slide, all those co connectivities are supported by TOIT and by the ESP32. By default, it only has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, in this chip. If you, have, if you want to have cellular connectivity or Ethernet, you have to plug here an external module into the development kit. But imagine that you have a, fl I mean, this device could be 40,000 kilometers from where you are, and you, you, you just go to the console, and you can update the code to the device. You can run code on the device from anywhere. So as long as the device is up and connected to the network, then it's available on the platform. So I think that is, is super cool. And uh, also the ability to support cellular, because it's not just Wi-Fi, it could be cellular, for example. So I will let it here for a minute. OK, so we got uh, our hardware running. So the next step is to actually run a, a small program, uh, the typical Hello World. So, First, I would like to explain what is a program in Toy's world. A program is um, usually a short piece of code, like a kind of a snippet of code uh, that runs once on the device, and then it disappears. So it's like to do experiments, a, a prototype, a quick give it a try kind of thing. And I'm telling this because there's a difference between a program and an application that we will see later with the traffic light. Okay, that will be an application. In this case, it's a, just a program. It's a piece of code that you can just run. And in this example, we are going to do it through the web. And the next example, we are doing it through the command line so that you can see both, both ways, okay? So to run it from the web console, all you need to do is go to the console, you select your device. So I will, for example, select Calm Plane, which is mine. You can go to the Code tab. And here, you have a workspace, a playground, where you can, you can type whatever you want. Sorry, I was missing. OK. You can type whatever you want in the workspace in the playground. And there is a small button there which says run on the device. So when you do that, run on device, the guy will compile the code, compress it, send it to the device, execute it in the device, and get back the results. So you can see there, in that, uh, on the bottom, it's kind of the console that has been 
redirected from, from the device. But what is important here is that this snippet of code did not run on the browser. It didn't run on, I don't know, somewhere. It was run on the device. So the program was compiled, sent it over the air to the device, executed, and then we see the results here. OK? Questions so far? OK, good. The next, uh, so this is uh, for those that, I mean, most of us, uh, if not all, we are developers. So in this case, it's just the, st the specification of the main kind of function. And this is just one line of code, which is to print the hello world. So there's not much to explain. But in the next one, we may have a little bit more. So the next example we are going to see is what is called a, a date and time logger program, which is pretty much it's a small pr program. But we will do two things uh, before going forward. So in the same way that I told you to select the Riot dev day from the console, we are going to do the same from the command line. So we're going to say, OK, now we, I, want to be, I want to be in this project so that all further commands will be around that project. So let's execute this first line, toit project use and Riot dev day. So let's do that. So I would do toit uh, project use. Be careful with it's uh, uh, case sensitive. So write it exactly. Riot dev day. And say, OK, project change to Riot dev day. OK. Perfect. We are now. We are now using uh, that project. Yeah. Ah, it asks you to authorize. Okay. Yeah. You might need to sign in. Yes. It's the sign in. It's kind of memorized for some time, and then you have to sign in again. So yeah, if you have the sign in uh, web, just sign in. Okay. With that line, we basically say okay. I want, by default, I'm now using Riot Dev Day project. And the next step is to actually say, OK, my default device is this one. And why this is? Because you may have many devices, OK? And if you have many devices, there are a lot of commands that you may want to run. And you have to tell, OK, but to which device you want to do this? Like, for example, let's say I want to run a program from the command line. I would have to say all of the time, to which device, to which device. So with this, with this second line, with the toy device use, we are telling toy, OK, my default device is this one. So if you don't specify anything, I will assume it's this default. So that way, we will set this line so that all future commands do not require to specify uh, device name. It's this one. So let's execute this. Just replace the device name with your actually with your real device name. So I will do that. I will do toy device use, uh, I think it was calm plane. And now it says calm plane is now your default device. OK, perfect. This is permanent uh, until it's permanent until either you change it again or in the commands, you specify to which. So every toy command allows you to, to, to specify to which device. But if you don't, then it uses the specified default. It's based on my user login? Yes. Okay. I think it's, it's somewhere stored in some cache directory. So good? OK. So now we go to the actual date and time logger. And from here, what I recommend is that you go to this uh, GitHub repository. And we are going to download 
the examples that we are going to use for the rest of the demo, which is this one and another one. So if you have Git installed in your machine, I recommend you to just do a, a Git clone of that repository. And if you don't have Git, I, you can do the following. So let me show you. If you go to this, this is the GitHub repository. The example that we are going to use now is the, is the date and time dot toit. And you can copy the code from here and paste it into a file and name that file uh, date and time dot toit. But if you, if you have Git installed, I recommend you to clone it because then it will be easier. So let me put the screen back so that you can see the path. Or you can copy paste it from the PDF if that's easier. So of course, if you run it, you should see the results which is my screenshot there at the bottom, which is just printing the date and time, uh, which it's on a given time zone that could be changed. So now that we got all here, I wanted to quickly show you what the code does. It's, it's really simple. It, um, if you remember, uh, this is a high level language, so it has uh, classes, it has instances, objects, methods. Uh, it has uh, the, the memory is managed by a garbage collector. So it's like developing in Java or Python, Ruby, or whatever you are used to. So in this case, what it does is just the main function just ask for the, for the class time. It asks uh, a new instance that represents the, 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 the now, so the, the current time. Uh, in the local time zone, which happens to be in Europe by default. And then it just prints that time. So if you see this time, it's a variable. And, it's, uh, and then it asks, it sends a couple of messages to that variable, like H, and then M, and then year, and then month, and then day. And then it just prints that. So, so far, there is nothing strange. It's just a class, an instance, and then we, sh we send some message or we, we execute some methods. OK? The next example, it's slightly more complicated, which is the traffic light. Uh, this is the last one you, you would have to do. So don't worry. I, I, won't, <laughs> I won't make you work any longer. So this is the last one. Um, now, the step is exactly the same as the previous one. You need to go to the GitHub. But now, if we see in GitHub below what we saw before, there is a traffic light demo project here. And if you see, there will be two files now, a traf traffic light.toit and a traffic light.yam. So here you can see the traffic light.toit, for example, which is this code, and then the yam which is this code. So you will need to do the exact same thing you did in the previous step. So either clone the files, either if you already have cloned the repository, then you are ready to go because you already have the files. If you did not, you can copy paste and save those into those names that you see there, traffic light yarn and traffic light toy. So, um, the next step is to understand a little bit just the pin layout of the ESP32. So if you uh, face the ESP32 to you, you will see that it has many pins. Uh, every pin has its own usage. So some, for example, are used, for example, to implement uh, a given protocol. So for example, SPI, which is a common, uh, a common protocol, requi requires certain, the, the yellow pins. Uh, and then there are some general purpose pins that you can use for 
whatever you want. In this case, since we are going to use a traffic light, which just is a LED, we can use any general purpose pin, OK? And for simplicity, because uh, the traffic light will have four pins, one for each LED and a ground, we will use these four pins that you see here, which is the ground, the GPO 12, 14, and 27. So you might need a magnifier <laughs> or have good eyes to see it on the, on the, on the thing. But to give you an idea of where it is, the, this ground here, it's just next, it's on the left of the red light. So you, you would see it, uh, the ground is next, it's on the left of the, of the LED. OK? Yeah. So if you plug it, now you can, f you can try to plug the, the traffic light. So I will do the same. And this is how it should look like. Um, you should have the ground to the ground of the, of the traffic light. So if you now take your traffic light, and if you face it to you, you will see that the, very tiny, the left, the very left is the ground. OK? So you need to put the, the ground into the ground there. So basically, you need to find out which is the ground and put it there from the ground up to the 27. So you should be ground with ground and then using the rest of the pins. And I can help if someone is having trouble. It's OK. Yeah. Got it? OK. OK. And it, we will know in a, in a little bit if, if you connected correct or not. So when we run the example, we, we, will, we will see. So I had mine connected, yes. OK. So in this case, what I want to do is that we will run the example first, and then we will take a look to the code. I think it will be easier, OK? So if you remember previously, if you came back here, there were two files, the, the .toit, which is the toit application with the toit code, and then a YARM. And what is that YARM? Well, if you remember, I told you that the traffic light, it was an application not a program. And the application requires some extra information, which we will see later. So the command to run an application is deploy. So it's not toit run, as we used before, because toit run is for a program. And for an application, it's toit deploy. And you need to specify the yarn file instead of the toit. Because you need all this information. And it will be clearer later. For the moment, just run toit, deploy, and the traffic light yam. And you should see, so let, let's see if it works for me. Uh, traffic light, toit, deploy, traffic light, dot yam. And uh, hopefully it works. Let me see. You have the red, then the red and the yellow, then the green, then yellow again, and then red. If you go to the toy console now, and you go to your device, and you go to the apps tab, you will see that now you have deploy an application, which, which you can see the name, the status, it says it's, it's green, it's installed, and it contains uh, the program called trafficlight.toit. You can see, you should see that with your device as well. It's working? OK, good. So we are all working? OK.
So the, the result, as you see, is that the red uh, goes, and then it stays with the yellow, and then it goes to the red. So this is, not, this is funny, but this is not a bug. This is how traffic likes to walk in Argentina. And when we came here, <laughs> we said, but this is not how it works here in the state, but OK. In Argentina, it works like this. So <laughs> this is how, it, how a traffic light looks like in Argentina. So when it goes from red to yellow, the red stays. But when going on the other direction, it does not. It goes directly. So when you have, you know that when you see the yellow light, you know where it is coming from. So it, but we found out that in Denmark, where Casper is, it's the same thing. So I don't want to say anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get it. So um, I wanted to show you quickly the, the code of this example, which it's more, uh, it's a little bit more advanced than what we see, what we saw before. And I don't pretend you to get um, experts. Why I can't? I don't want to become experts in, in toy programming language with this session, but let me explain you quickly what this code does, OK? So you are good, Greg? You are all good? OK. So basically, it imports uh, the GPO module, which is the module that allows you to talk with the pins and do stuff with, with the pins. And then it creates a class, which is called traffic light. Again, this is an object-oriented language, so it has classes, etc. And here, it creates three instance variables. The instance variable red light, yellow light, and green light. And each of the instance variable is initialized with an instance of pin, GPO pin. That's a class. That's another class. So it creates an instance of the pin and initializes that pin instance with these two arguments. Mm -hmm. The first argument is the number of the GPO. If you remember, we, we use those uh, when we plug the traffic light. And then the second argument is just to say that the pin is for output. This is because GPOs can be used for input or for output. Okay? So it just basically creates an instance of pin with two arguments, and then it assigns that into an instance variable. Then it defines some constants like on and off, which are some constants. It's the way to define constants in, in Toit. And then there is some helper methods, like for example, there is a, a method which is called turn all lights on, that basically calls turn all lights with the on argument. And then we have the method turn all lights off that calls turn all lights with the off argument. And then we have a method like it's turn all lights with an argument, a number argument. And what this method does, turn all lights, Basically, it creates a collection with the three instance variables, and then it just iterates with the do method. It iterates the collection, and for each, for, for each iteration, it sets to the pin, which each iteration will be a pin instance, it will set the number. So this is basically setting on or off each of the elements of the collection. OK? It's more or less clear. And then we have the real method that runs the sequence, which it's basically, OK, we'll start fresh. We will put all lights off. Then we set on the red. We sleep a little bit. Then we turn on the yellow. We sleep a little bit. Then we put off both of them. We put the green on. We sleep a little bit, then we put it off, the green, we turn on the yellow, then we wait, and, we, and then we put the yellow off. And that's, it's, it's a, a traffic light sequence, again, in Argentina. <laughs> so the final piece is the main. So what this program does at startup, when, when this program is executed. And what you can see here, the main function, it does traffic light variable 
it creates an instance of the traffic light class, which is this class that we define here, all of this class. And then it just executes twice this line, which is run, basically run the sequence. So it's executing twice that, that syntax, that, uh, that method, sorry. And something I wanted to comment here, which it's a little bit advanced, but uh, I still wanted to show it, is that you may have seen blocks or closures in other languages. And in this case, I just wanted to show that the, in here, this two repeat, this line here, it's a block of code. It's, it's a closure. And the same goes in this example. When you do all, all lights do, this is uh, a closure. Uh, I don't want to get into the details, but if you have seen blocks or closures in other object-oriented languages, you probably know that this is a really powerful pr uh, language uh, piece. Um, for me, it's incredible that such thing is available in a programming language that can run in, in a $2 device. And again, there is also, you can see here that you don't have any memory management. It's, this is done for you. You don't you need to allocate, deallocate, and then you have deallocated twice, and then you crash the system. So you have a garbage collector, like any other object-oriented language, which I think it's, again, it's super powerful. Ah, the YAM. Yeah, good question. Yeah, good. Th thank you for reminding me that. I, I forgot. So the YAM basically uh, gives the uh, information about the uh, configuration of the application. So at, at the least, it needs the following information. So it needs, for example, uh, it needs a name, which is you can see what you see. If you go to here, it's what you see here, the traffic light here. So it's basically a name. Then an entry point, which is which which dot toit needs to be executed with, with this application, okay? And then what triggers that execution of the application? Because if you remember, the app will stay on the ESP32. It's not like the program that just go away. It will stay. So then you have to, you have to tell, okay, when do you want me to run this application? So here I am just, I am only saying, okay, run on boot, and run on install. So that's why when, when you did the toy deploy, you saw it working because on install is true. In fact, I invite you now to unplug it and plug it again, and you will see it will also execute because it has on boot true. So when it, it, when it boots, it will execute it again. Okay? And there, Lots of ways to configure when to run. You can tell it to run every day, once every 50 seconds. I mean, there are a lot of possible triggers that you can read in the documentation. So far, I am just doing these basic ones. OK? Yeah. Yep. For example, uh, you can, but you have to re redeploy it. Yeah. For example, I can do that right now. I can change this to 5. I save the file, then I go to my terminal and do deploy. Uh, now it has deployed, so now if you see mine, it should be five times. So let's see. Oh, I think I. Okay. One, two, one. It should, it should be five, five times. So let's see. It was originally two, so now if it continues, it works. Okay. So it's, you have to redeploy. But, yeah, but there is something, uh, there is a, a tool that I won't have time to show. It's just, uh, it's uh, uh, kind of an extension called Jaguar, which allows you to do live reloading of the ESP32. So you have a file, and every save of the file automatically redeploys. So you, you can go editing, and each time you save the, the file, it will automatically run. But we, we won't have time for that, unfortunately. OK, 
The last thing I wanted to show you is the fleet device update. And here it's, imagine you have a thousand of deployed ESPC2, which is quite common. Like you can have a ESPC2 in a wash machine, in a washing machine. You can have in the air, air wick that throws things. You can have it in a dog's collar. You can have it in trash bins, uh, in a ship. I mean, it could be anywhere. So imagine you have a fleet of devices uh, and you make a new version of your application. You make a, a new version of, of, of your system. So I wanted to, to show you how I can deploy, how, how can I can make a change and deploy that to a fleet of devices right now. And again, all of the de devices will be updated over the air through, through the console and through the platform. So what I will gonna do, but I will do it only, you don't do it because if we do it, if you all do it, we will be all of us all updating the old devices. So that will be a mess. So I will just run this command. So what we are gonna change is we are gonna, maybe we will fix it and we will make it an American traffic light if you want. So let me, probably we need to turn off the red lights after we put it, uh, before setting up the yellow, it's okay. This is how it works here. So we put off the red. And then we will wait much less time. So I will remove a zero from each waiting time. So now the, the, the traffic light should, should go way faster, okay? So I will, and then we will do a 50 repeat because now we will go faster, okay? And I will save this. And now I would do toit, deploy, no, fleet, deploy, okay, are you prepared? Let's see if it works, this is, okay, let's see if it works. So here it's saying, okay, you are not specifying any prefix, this is because if you have a thousand devices, you normally want to prefix, you, you may want to uh, use the name to encode some information like sensor or humidity or, so you, something you want to just update a, a portion of your fleet. In this case, I am not specifying any prefix, so I will update all of them. So it's kind of a warning, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And then we have deployed that on all of the devices. So let's see, let's check your devices. It's working. So I updated all of them. So I think this is, I don't know, this is the, the, the part I like the most of the demo. <laughs> so that basically shows, how, well, if you go back to the slide, we can, you can actually see uh, what the, the command did. Uh, uh, it's, I think it's, it's not what you ask, but it's similar how, how you can re-update your, your deployed system. Uh, not only you can do it with one, but you can do it to, the, to, your, to your whole fleet. Okay, and the last step is to uh, prepare this for taking home. So we would, we, you should follow uh, this, these commands. So. Let's first run the, the first two, toit device unclaim and toit project use my project. Let's just execute the first two commands. So what we are gonna do is basically move back the device to your project because I will delete the Riot Dev Day organization. It, it was just for the purpose of this demo. So we are gonna to provision again the device for home, for your home. So you need to first unclaim the device with toy device unclaim and toy project. Use my project. And now, what, because what we did so far is we unclaim the, the device from our current organization, from our current project. So it's not in Riot Dev Day anymore. And then I tell the command line, okay, now I want to use 
my project, which is the default that Toy creates for you. And the problem is now that we need to reprovision the hardware so that it now belongs to my project project. Because the original was claim and provision against Riot Dev Day. So what you need to do now is run this line uh, which will provision the hardware from the command line. The only thing you need to change here is the device name. In fact, you might want to even specify whatever name you want because you are bringing it home. So if you want to give a different name, you can. It's up to you. If you want to use the same name that you were originally assigned, and I recommend you to copy paste this from the PDF because it's a little bit longish to, to but as, as you wish. You can copy from the screen or copy from the copy paste. And this will provision again the device, but now against my project. project. <laughs> so basically what we are doing is the same that we did from the, from the web console, you, you remember at the beginning to provision, but now we are doing it from the command line. Uh, we, just, we are specifying a given name, or not, as you wish, but it's basically the same command. So don't do the second command yet. We, it could be done through the command line like that. Uh -huh. uh, but it can also be done through the web. So probably we will use the web. Yeah, I, I will show you. OK. So now what we did is we basically reprovision it again from the command line instead, instead of from the web console. Um, but we did it under our my project project, okay? So the next, the last step that we need to do is to add your Wi-Fi setting of your home, because imagine if you now go home and you plug it, it won't connect because it has the white tech uh, connection. So what we can do while it is alive here, we can go to. Uh, Okay, it worked. Cool. Thank you, Casper. So now if I go to um, my device, which, yeah, n never mind. I, I won't uh, do it. So if you go here, your configuration, SSID, here the connections, click edit, and you, you will see this white tag there. You can add Wi-Fi. You put your home SID, your password, like foo bar. You add it, and you save it. And that's it. Now, when you go home, you should be able to connect it, and it, it should work. OK. So um, here, there are some additional resources that I recommend uh, about Toit. Uh, we have some um, official links there, like the toit.io, the toit.lang, about the language, the docs. This package.toit.io is very cool. So this is a kind of a, a global uh, index for community-driven uh, packages available for toit, to, like libraries and frameworks to do different things. And then, OK, there is a blog post that we wrote at instantiations, our toy, you, you may want to read it. And then we list here the hardware that we use for this demo in case you want to buy it again or you want to send it to someone or this is exactly the, what we bought for you. Okay, so with that being said, um, I will let Seth say the last uh, words. If you made it to here, congratulations, good work. <laughs> What'd you guys think? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So um, yeah, I do want to thank Mariano, and I, I really want to thank Casper for um, for joining us today. Uh, Toyota is a really cool platform. Um, I, I think Casper said it best because when I was introduced to uh, the IoT development, uh, the the tools that are used, the languages, my my thought kind of paralleled the wow, this sucks, um, and 
could be better, should be better. And so I think, uh, and thankfully others felt like Casper and Toit felt the same way and they built that wonderful platform. So, um, you know, we're, so we're here because we really want uh, to see continued traction with Toit. We hope that you continue to work with it, experiment with it, read the docs, tell others about it, build things, have some fun. Um, and if you, uh, you know, if you start building larger systems or you, you need any additional assistance, you know, you just feel free to reach out to instantiations where we can um, help make custom libraries or tooling or, you know, if you just have questions, uh, please, please reach out to us. Um, I don't know how much time we have remaining for the room, but if... Uh, the room, we're okay, but we're all over time. So. Okay, but, so in either case, if you guys want to hang around, um, feel free to. We're going we're gonna to hang around a little bit. Uh, we can talk, have some fun. Um, if you want to see uh, anything about uh, VAST, the VAST platforms, or if you're just curious about that, let us know. If you want to continue working with the ESP32s, We'll yeah, be around to help with, nice we have some more demos. And uh, just thank you so much for coming. Good to, good to meet you guys. Thank you. Thank you.